Why do Formula 1 liveries look the way they do? Why do we see such crazy fan concepts compared to the more understated designs from the teams? Like many things in life, it's more complicated than it seems, and here's a little insight into how your favourite F1 designs come together. When it comes to motorsport, delivery is the single most important piece of branding a team will produce. It's what's shown to all the fans on track and the millions of people watching at home. Livery design is not simply a case of making something look pretty, however, as motorsport is a big business with several different parties involved, each with their own vision and message that they want to share with the world. The sponsors of your favourite racing team will typically pay to appear on the car, as having their logo shown to such a massive audience is a big advertising opportunity. Depending on how much they pay and what deals are in place, their branding will appear in certain places on the car, and in certain sizes too. A title sponsor may pay millions to cover the entire car in their colours, whereas a smaller partner may only afford to appear on the wing mirrors. On top of this, every brand has their own guidelines, so that whenever they're presented to the world, their message is consistent. Each sponsor's logo can only be shown in certain colours, or needs to have a minimum amount of clear space around it, so that it doesn't look like it's cramped into a corner. One interesting example are the classic McLaren and Alfa Romeo cars from the 1980s, with the iconic Marlboro red and white chevron. Andy Blackmore, who worked on McLaren's liveries in the late 1990s, shared some insight into these requirements and requests from the title sponsor. If I remember correctly, McLaren and everyone else had to work with a specific ratio for Marlboro's own agency, which was very precise with chevrons in specific positions. On an F1 car, the chevron's starting point was specific to the windshield. At the rear, the chevron point was a certain amount forward of the rear of the engine cover, but there was also a certain ratio of red in front of the wheels. There were also specific liveries for full tobacco, UK, Australian and French GPs. Some affected the car, some apparel only, and some on trucks. On top of this are the various challenges of making any project at a big company, such as the budget, time, resources available, approvals from the bosses, and uniquely for motorsport, the regulations. Every racing series has some limitations on what you can do with your livery design. Elements that must be on the car in specific places, sizes, and the appearance of the driver numbers and so on. Formula E's are pretty detailed as you can see here. While Formula 1's aren't as restrictive, there are still a few things you need to consider when making a design. Speaking of making a design, how do you make a good one that gets people to hit the like button? Let's find out. As we just learned, designing a livery that everybody is happy to sign off on is pretty tough, but that doesn't stop some great designs from showing up on the grid. One of the key aspects of a good livery design is to allow the key lines and shapes of your concept to work in harmony with the natural shape of the car itself. Each F1 car has its own distinctive blocks, lines, body panels and areas of interest, and aligning your design with them makes everything a bit more pleasing to the viewer, as their eyes are drawn to specific points on the car. Sometimes deliberately crossing those lines and breaking up shapes can work extremely well, but only when it's done in a delicate manner. Those Marlboro cars are a great example, the 2020 Racing Point, not so much. The level of detail is important too, an overly complex livery design may lead to confusion when it's placed on a Formula 1 car, as your eye has to choose between figuring out the livery and all of the wings and bodywork on the car itself. This is why so many designs are relatively simple, and give each sponsor plenty of space to breathe. On the topic of sponsors, if you're lucky enough to have them all agree, displaying several sponsors in a single colour can help with the cohesion of the design too. A dark livery design with a dozen white sponsor logos will look very smart, whereas if they were all in colour you wouldn't know where to look first. When it comes to colour, that is another subject with unique challenges. As your colour choices have to reflect the brands on the car, or the manufacturer if you're a factory team, having the right colour scheme helps sell their brand better. Again, too many colours makes things messy, but a maximum of 3 or 4 can work really well. The real world is a highly dynamic place however, and a design that works well in the daytime might struggle at night, or in the rain, or when the car is in shadow. Most brands have specific colour codes that take all of this into consideration, though sometimes the designers have to get creative. A notable example once again comes from McLaren, this time during their Vodafone days. Vodafone use a particular shade of red in all of their communications, and in order to have that red appear perfectly on TV, the car in real life was painted a fluorescent orange. That way, when a camera was pointed at the car, it would appear in the exact shade of red on your TV screen. Pretty clever. Combining all of these challenges, alongside the various requirements and approval processes of the team and the brands involved, is an incredibly difficult process, which is why most Formula 1 liveries take up to 9 months to put together. Over 50 different ideas are explored and eventually whittled down to the one that everybody's happy with, and if the car is successful on track, it could become the next all-time classic, as Alpine graphic designer Sean Bull explains. Like you look at all the iconic cars, it's always JPS Lotus, Marlboro McLaren, Chrome Vodafone, McLaren. 
um, as well. And it's because it's the same car year after year that's been developed. There's victories and championships associated to them. Um, mm. And it has that historical weight behind it. You think of Senna, um, Marlboro McLaren, Hamilton in his um, photochromes and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. And it's having that continuity and Red Bull will get that. In about 30 years, everyone will look back at the Red Bull car and go, oh my God. To learn more about how F1 liveries are made, check out Tomo's excellent chat with Sean Bull on screen now. And I'll see you all soon. Farewell.